The worst thing is when it, something kind of flips out and it just keeps flying. <laughs> because at some point it's just going to like fly over the horizon and you're going to be like, oh man, I don't have enough gas money to go get that. So, <laughs> yes? I haven't actually calculated it out, and I'm really not qualified to answer that, but if I had to give a rule of thumb, uh, I'd say probably, you could probably get a half pound up, but usually you're talking ounces, like six, six <coughs> ounces uh, is ideal, but actually, I don't know, you might be able to do more. It all depends on the airframe and, and what you're comfortable with. Also, do you have a counterbalance for the matrix? Yes. A funny story about that guy. So, um, okay, so uh, if anything, <laughs> thank you. Um, if anybody knows anything about airplanes, then you know that you have to uh, you got to keep them balanced. And if they're not balanced, then they they don't really tend to fly very well. Uh, one day I was messing around and I had a really heavy payload and I just kind of popped that out and I didn't rebalance the plane. You have to find its center of gravity and make sure that everything uh, orients around that. And with any model airplane or any plane, they'll tell you where the uh, center of gravity is supposed to be in relation to the wings and to the uh, fuselage. And you have to keep the plane balanced within those bounds. So I didn't do that one day. I put the plane up, and I was like, man, this thing's flying really funny. Anyways, when we came down to land, it stalled out and then just did a nosedive from about 60 feet up. So that was the end of that, uh, that, was the end of that model. But, you know, the best thing about foam is, you know, you can just, you know, take all the electronics out, put it in another, uh, another foam fuselage. I didn't put prices on the slides intentionally because a lot of this stuff depends on your own setup and, and how you want to do this. But the actual, the foam model here, if you don't buy it with all, with all the model airplane electronics and accessories, you can just get the foam wings, fuselage, you know, tail, elevator, everything for about $60. So, you know, if I really mess this up and I can't glue it back together anymore, then it's not a big deal. I just, you know, go call my parents and, hey, <laughs> hey guys, I need, some, I need some more dough here. So, um, another interesting thing that you can do with these is you can fly at night. So, uh, with that $18 board camera, like I mentioned, we have a really low lux rating, um, which means that we can kind of see in the dark. Mostly, uh, you use infrared lights to kind of illuminate what a camera's looking at. But this was taken about 45 minutes, maybe an hour after the sun had gone down in northern New York. And as you can see, the, the horizon right there, you know, it's all lit up. Um, the sun is set, and I assure you, like, I couldn't see my fingers, you know, six inches in front of my face. But um, all the lights on the ground, and the, uh, we had a little bit of cloud cover, so it was good illumination. Um, now I take that back. We didn't have good. We did not have good cloud cover, so there was you know good moon illumination, and you can see that. Uh, I mean, it's almost like daytime, except you have all these bright lights and. So, oh, question over there. Yeah, um, you were talking about the lithium polymer battery. Earlier. Yes. Are you running a single power source for everything, or are you running different power sources for the electronics that you put on? That's a good question. Yeah. Normally. And if the former, have you run into any noise problems? Um, Okay, so the question was, if you're using a LiPo battery, are we using a primary battery source um, to power everything, or are we using multiple batteries to, you know, kind of splice everything out? Because you get noise issues in, uh, in the power. And the answer is, it all depends on your ESC. If your electronic speed controller does a really good job of filtering out the noise from the motor, um, and then the, no the uh, power, the regulated power that gets sent to uh, the receiver and to the Arduino pilot and everything, then you can, you can get away with one battery. But generally how I do it is I use one battery for the payload because the video transmitter has absolutely terrible feedback down the power source. And that would, I suspect, really mess with my uh, microcontroller. And so just to be safe, I keep that on a totally separate battery. And then the, uh, the whole autopilot system and the motor are all on its own separate system. Um, so usually I fly with two batteries. One's going to be huge. It's going to be you know, about 2,000 milliamp hours generally is what I fly with. And then the payload battery will be anywhere from 500 to 1,000 milliamp hours, which is really small, very lightweight, uh, depending on the mission length. So um, you want to do a power budget ahead of time. And really, you only want to put the amount of battery power up in the air that you need for your mission, because anything extra is, is really just kind of a waste. You're making the plane heavier, and you're going to get worse uh, flight performance out of it. 
Yes, in the back. Have I looked at solar panels? Um, NASA looked at solar panels. <laughs> NASA had a lot of money. <laughs> I, I just don't have the money for, you know, like satellite grade solar panels. And it has been done. You can get model airplanes up in the air. Uh, NASA has a, a couple flying wings that they've set uh, Guinness Book of World Records with. Um, these, these things would just go up and somehow they would kind of fly around and recharge batteries and they would just fly with batteries at night and they kept them up for days at a time. I, I think I looked at that in like high school, like I shammed some high school project, you know, by gluing some solar cells that I found in like a discount hobby place and, you know, I told them it worked. It, it really doesn't. <laughs> you need a lot more energy to, uh, to keep this plane airborne than uh, solar cells will provide at the, at the moment. Yes, sir. Okay, so this setup right here, the plane itself is about $60. The engine upgrade is about $50. The FMA co-pilot stabilization system was about $50 to $80. The video transmitter is $50. Extra antennas probably looking about $40. Um, Ardu pilot, the shield, miscellaneous servo cables, the batteries, um, the speed controller, you're probably looking at about another $200. So this plane right here is, represents about $400, $450. Um, so that's the, uh, the ground station, though, is kind of where you, you spend your real money because you need a seven-channel radio or higher to, uh, to have enough channels to really operate this, and it needs to be programmable. So that's going to really run you a lot of money. You're probably looking at like $500 just for the stinking video transmitter. And when you pop it open because, you, you know, you're curious, and you, you want to see what you paid for, you're, you're really like, man, are these guys serious? Like, I could have put this together for 100 bucks. But you're probably looking at slapping down initial startup costs, I want to say about $1,000. And then after that, you're looking at maybe $500 per system. So this stuff is very inexpensive, uh, especially if you can you know, get a university to kind of fund your research or something. Yes, little guy over here. Nobody spotted or reported me yesterday. <laughs> Not that I've heard of. There's no Marriott representative in the hotel or in the room right now, is there? Because the would you like to fly again before the end of the conference? Yes. Okay. We'll set something up. If the snow, um, it, it all depends on wind conditions. Um, I kind of got paranoid because I, I lost a whole bunch of models. I'd take them up. You know, as soon as I get it put together, I'd run outside and. You know, we're in the Hudson River Valley up there in West Point, you know, so like there's like 60 mile an hour winds like all day long. I swear they put this place in like the coldest part of the, uh, the East Coast they could find. And so I'll put the model up there and it immediately go like whoosh. And it's like exit scene left and I'm like, oh man, are you serious? Like, where'd this thing go? It's like floating down the river. <laughs> so uh, if the wind conditions are right, I will definitely take it out. We'll put it up again and hopefully we'll get a better RF link. And I can demo that. Um, Maybe we can uh, work something out where we can stream that video feed. Uh, but uh, if you guys would like to come out, uh, just ask me later. We'll, we'll set a time up. Yes, sir? Is that ground control system you mentioned about uh, getting real-time data from the plane so you can see how much battery life is left? So failing or good question. So the ground control system. I didn't put a slide up on the, uh, on the ground control system because, uh, well, honestly, I haven't really gotten it working yet. But I like to look at just the serial feed live, and when the plane's up there and it's doing its thing, you really can take your time and just look at your laptop and, you know, look at the, the numbers. But Jordy Munoz, the 25-year-old guy that put together this uh, $25 autopilot system, um, he actually, like, built an entire setup in LabVIEW with dials and everything as, as if it's an airplane system. And so, you know, it shows you your orientation, airspeed, current battery level and everything, and uh, that's actually really cool to look at. Um, I just haven't gotten it working because I was messing with it and I broke it. So, but uh, the, the autopilot system, um, the ground station is pretty awesome. The, uh, the picture you saw earlier was the config tool and that's what you use to upload via umbilical cord the, the uh, waypoints. So let me just finish up my last two slides here. ArduPilot Mega. So the community recognized that there was a fundamental deficiency with ArduPilot, and that was that there was only a single serial line in and out of this microcontroller. Um, because of that, and because the